Whoops, see, I always go the wrong way. Hello, everybody. This is Beth Wersdale, author. It's a beautiful Thursday, and welcome to the Witty Writers Show. And I'm absolutely thrilled because I have with me Carmen Bet. Hello, darling. Hello there. I am so stoked to be talking to you today, Carmen. Um, for so many reasons. I mean, there are so many reasons why I'm excited to chat with you today. Um, the first being is that you've had multiple careers, five, five careers. Well, this is your fifth one as an author. Um, and you just keep going from strength to strength to strength. You, I'm blown away by you. You are absolutely That's very gracious. Oh. Thank you. You are amazing. We've already got people joining us, which is fantastic. So everybody who's joining us, um, please pop up a hello. Um, and if you've got any questions for Carmen, please put them in the comments and I can put them on the screen and, um, and we can answer them for you. Now, Carmen, I'd like to start by saying that you are an absolutely gorgeous lady of 89 years old. <laughs> And you're now embarking on your fifth career as an author. Now, you've done nursing. You've actually taught specialised nursing. And you've been a sixth grade teacher as well. Did you always want to write books while you were doing these other careers? No. <laughs> when I was a child, I was always torn between teaching and nursing. And my daddy made me a baby bed and, oh. and he made me a desk. So one day my dollies would be sick and I'd make them all better. And then they'd go to school the next day and I'd teach them. So all my life I was torn between the two careers or the two hats and got to do both. And my work as in teaching as a nurse was to teach the skills in the lab. I was not an instructor going to the hospital, but stayed on campus with the students. It was a wonderful job and the blending of the two things I loved the most, so it was wonderful. That's absolutely amazing. And I'm so, as I said to you before we came on, I'm so glad mm -hmm. that you were doing that job, Carmen, because um, I've had a couple of experiences myself which were extremely unpleasant. Um, <laughs> one of which was actually my vein was the first. Ooh. Yes, it was awful. I swear to God, it, I, I literally felt like my arm was, was in a vice and the bruise was literally like that all, all down my arm. It, it was awful. So thank and goodness. Scary. And scary too. Yes, it was. Thank goodness you were teaching people the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes, I, I think you did. Um, Heather's just joined us. She's just saying hello. Hi, Heather. She is absolutely fabulous. And she's just started her own book group, which I invite everybody to check out because it's wonderful. Um, so how long were you teaching for? How long were you a nursing for? And how long were you a school teacher for, Carmen? Oh, well, I started um, actually in a Christian education, and that was a four-year job. And then I taught school for two years. And I, I laugh because the second year it's teaching sixth grade, I could hear the kids out in the hall. Oh, we got old lady Trivet who was 26. <laughs> <laughs> they all wanted the man teacher at first, but they came around. But um, I that taught uh, school in the sixth grade two years. And then I was fortunate enough to stay home with the children for 14. And I went to a, a ladies meeting and they spent 30 minutes um, trying to decide if they'd have the coffee before or after the meeting. And I thought, I don't have time for this. So I went and retrained because there weren't any teaching jobs. And I had moved from Illinois to Minnesota. So I retrained as a nurse because I already had so much of it done. You know, I was always torn between the two. Yeah. And so uh, I got my RN in, in 1977, which was, you weren't even born probably. <laughs> but. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, that's when I got it. And I just, the reason I know that is I just found the certificate this week. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible how quick time flies. I'm sure you must look back at your previous careers 
and and the time you spent raising your children like I do and think where on earth did the time go it's been a long life that's for sure it's been a very good life had a wonderful family and husband yeah oh that's absolutely amazing we, we've got some more comments popping up and people coming on um Wendy's just joined us she says hello ladies and um and also Car look Kristen Kristen's popped up she says hi Carmen and Beth <laughs> hi Kristen She's so lovely. I was just about to mention you, Kirsten, as well. Now, Kirsten is actually the owner of Fox Point Publishing, and she actually uh, has published Carmen's books, and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, so before we get to any more questions on the comments, I want to show the books because they're so beautiful. Now, before we get before we actually show your books, Carmen what inspired you to actually write them because obviously your husband had alzheimer's i didn't write when he was sick it was 18 right. years. okay uh, I, I just didn't uh but after he died the little dog was here alone with me and i watched her and she was funny there she's just a funny dog she does weird things not so much now because she's so old and she's hard of hearing and doesn't see well but uh, most of these stories are for real. I mean, she's just a character. <laughs> and so uh, I began to write them down on post-its. And when I had 17 things on the mirror and had to clean the mirror, I thought, I think I'll write a book. So I just did. And That's that was the first book. I have it here. Shall I show it? Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. We'd like to see them. Dog with a big attitude. Can you oh, see it? Oh, yes, just a little bit lower. Perfect. Oh, that's so cute. The illustrations are beautiful. Yes, Katie Hunter Dose is a marvelous, marvelous author and um, I mean, artist. And she draws just incredible pictures, I think. It just, uh, this one. Wow. That's so cute. And they're true stories and they're narrated by the dog. Uh, you know what this one is. The others are. So they're actually just, from her, from the dog's point of view. Yes, she narrates. That's she absolutely. Wrote, she wrote a book called Secrets, and, and she she says, "Ha ha ha! I fooled her. I never catch on in the whole book." And she it's a whole book of things that naughty things she does. <laughs> I have has done a dozen. Has done. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Do you know what? Uh, uh, dogs are so so. They really are characters in their own right. They really are. I, I've got two dogs myself. They're both golden doodles. Oh, and my, my youngest one, Poppy, she is an absolute character as well. She really is. She's so funny. She pinches underwear and eats them. I don't know why. Um, and she'll poot, like she'll do a little fart. And normally they're silent but deadly calm, and, and the smell makes your eyes water. They're that bad. But occasionally, occasionally she'll do one, and it'll squeak, and she'll look as if say, "Who did that? Where's that noise coming from?" And not realize she's done it herself. <laughs> but she cracks me up, honestly. But she something, something that looks so cute. She stinks worse than a skunk. I mean, it's awful. All of a sudden, you'd be sat there of an evening relaxing, and then you just get this waft <laughs> come next to you. And you're, oh. <laughs> What's her name? Poppy. Poppy or Poppy? Poppy, as in the flower. Poppy is the flower. Yeah, we. My husband. She was. She was my birthday present for my husband. But we had for her, and she was. Um, we picked her up in November, which is Remembrance Day. In November, in the in the UK, for the people that died in the wars, um, so I just thought Poppy. It's got to be Poppy because it's the flower of remembrance. Exactly. So, yeah, but she's she's no she she looks cute, but she's no lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So we got a comment from uh, from James. Hi, James. Thank you for joining us, darling. He says, "How old were you when you started writing?" I suppose it was four years ago when I started writing books. And so I would have been uh, 85. That's wonderful. 
Absolutely wonderful. So for, for all the authors that are watching right now, there you go. No excuse. Uh, you know, even after 80, you can have a full-on career as an author. There, it's, it's, it's never too late, is it, Carmen? No, and it, it's opened the door for me to be able to go around town and speak about Alzheimer's too, which my husband had for 18 years. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a, a real blessing. That, that's just amazing. It really, really is. I want to talk to you more about that. But Leanne has just said good morning. She's in Australia. Well, good morning. We didn't get to Australia. We traveled a great deal, but I'm sorry I didn't get there. Oh, you and me both. I still want to go eventually. Let's hope. Um, we've got Josephine from the UK. She says hello to you both. Well, thank you. Hello. And I've sold books in England. Oh, the Alzheimer's book. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. So everybody needs to go and have a look. And I know Kirsten's put the links available. So have a look at all of Carmen's books because they are truly amazing. Jane says you are amazing. I've got the Alzheimer's book right here. Oh, they are so beautifully done. They really, really are. And this one has been uh, uh, approved by uh, Dr. Sheila De Silva, a pediatrician from the Mayo Clinic Health System, which is quite an honor. That is an amazing honor. And, and I believe you, you was awarded um, the prestigious award from the um, Alzheimer's Off book. Yes. Right as well. That is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And Leanna says, you're, she said, that's amazing. And she loves the cover. Oh, yes. The artist. Can I tell you about the next one? It's What Shall I Be When I Grow Up? And so yes. she's, she's going to be a singer. And Katie's doing a picture of her with a microphone, a big smile on her face, a pink gown, and a tiara. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that'd be cute. <laughs> now, Carmen, I've got to ask you now because in a lot of the illustrations, in, in most of them, um, yes. she's wearing something, isn't she? Tassie's always got something on. Now, do you actually put these items on? Yes. She has this costume. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and there's a story in there about how she would not try it on. We went to a Halloween party, and this is the truth, and I got it out, and someone said, oh, look at Tassie, and so she let me put it on her, and she pranced around with the other dogs that was at obedience school, and um, had her picture taken, and it looked like, oh, I hope they got my good side, <laughs> and I, I assure it, today she'd never let me put it on her. She's a real, she's a stinker. She's like, I'm not doing that again, Mama. No. <laughs> Unless I have an audience. <laughs> I love it. Carmen, it sounds like you have a dog that's a bit of a prima donna. <laughs> <laughs> well, as she says in one of the books, she's getting me trained. Oh, my God. Do you know what? I thought that when I was training mine. I was thinking, are they training me or am I training them? I wasn't quite sure how it was working, but that's just amazing. Now, I think it's absolutely incredible that you've done these books about Alzheimer's because as we talked, you know, before we came live, I think most of us have either got somebody in our family who is suffering from Alzheimer's or we know of somebody absolutely. with Alzheimer's. So your books are really bringing an awareness but in a non-scary way. I mean, it's so relatable and, and so beautifully done. And I know you've got a book coming, which is called, um, where did I write it? It's Our Life with Alzheimer's. Our Life was Alzheimer's. There we go. Yeah. Exactly. So you're, you're, you're helping children and adults all understand about Alzheimer's. And I think I think that's incredible. And now this, I think book, this book will tell you what you need to do if you're a veteran, for example, for help. It's sort of a manual in a sense. And it talks about being an advocate. There are a lot of funny stories in it too, but um, this is for adults, and um, it's just our life, our life story with Alzheimer's over 18 years. That's just amazing. I, 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 think, I mean, I applaud you for sharing such a personal journey 
with you and your husband. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I think hearing somebody's story that has been through it and has gone through all those processes of caring for somebody with Alzheimer's, because um, I think not only is it incredibly difficult for the person who's suffering for Alzheimer's, especially at the beginning, because they know things are going wrong mm -hmm. and having to cope with that. But for, for I think, a loved one, seeing your, you know, your wife, husband, brother, whoever, going through that, it's heartbreaking because you know they they lose themselves their personality a lot of times revert back to their childhood for you that must have been incredibly difficult um well yes it, it was hard um but uh my husband always remained very sweet and caring and as i write in the book there were times when we didn't even know whether he knew we were in the room and the dog went all the time because she really was his. And uh, there's a story, this is true of course, that we were at toward the end when the dog and I were just sure he didn't know we were in the room and he picked up my hand and kissed it. And one other time we were doing devotions and again, I would have sworn he didn't know I was in the room and he folded his hands when I read the 23rd Psalm. So the point is uh, you never know what um, they can hear and what they still remember and know. And so you have to be very careful what you say for one. And um, you have to believe that it's important that you're there. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me, Carmen, because I'm sure uh, you know everybody who's watching can relate to, to, to you and your story mm -hmm. in some way. What was the first signs that you noticed that your husband had Alzheimer's? Because I think that's the major, one of the major problems, isn't it, is actually realizing that something is going on. Exactly. But what were the first signs that you We were in the cities and my husband uh, was a machine designer and then he would install the equipment, et cetera. So he traveled a great deal and set up uh, machines and company. In fact, that hot dog with the cheese down the middle or this uh, chili down the middle was his project. So he was a, a very bright man. And um, he traveled all over then to all the companies, uh, factories at the time, and even abroad. And uh, we were up in the cities to a performance with two friends. And um, he said he had to go to the bathroom and he got lost. Now, I might have gotten lost. But for him, a man who's been traveling abroad and everywhere, that was pretty unusual. So that was the first symptom. And the second thing was he's a real car. Uh, and he had an uh, old uh, car that he had restored him. And he's really a car nut. And uh, had been a mechanic, worked his way through college as a mechanic. And uh, he called and he said he couldn't find his car. He was taking a sketching class. So we made an appointment with our doctor and then we went to Mayo Clinic and they said he had dementia. And um, then uh, later on, they were able to wire him up and see what part of the brain was uh, affected. And it, it happened to be uh, the temporal lobes. So he had the, the long pain, uh, painful, but not the personality change. And so, uh, but his, his was slow to develop. And he had uh, really a, a lot of good years and during those 18 years. Yeah, yeah. And we had a lot of support when we needed it from our dear friends and family. I, so, I think it's I think it's amazing, isn't it? If you if you've got that network around you, you can help and support you. Yes, it makes important. all the difference. Yes, so important. especially later on, because I think people forget. Or, or some people just don't realize how hard it is to be a full-time carer, especially as a loved one, you know, as their disease progresses and it, and it gets physical and mental, it's exhausting to, to permanently look after another person, especially 
a female looking after a male because the males are generally a lot bigger, a lot heavier. And you're, you know, you're trying to do bath time, you're trying to get in and out of chairs. Well, we were very fortunate. We had nursing home insurance. And so I had help in the home Yes. at times. And then later uh, it was good when he was in the nursing home because it helped financially. Yeah. So I always urge everyone if they can to get it and get it when they're young so that they get a good price and yeah. are able to get it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're an incredible lady. You really, really are. Oh, yeah, it's blessed, I always say. I, I'm just in awe of you. I really, really am. And the, the books that you're publishing are just absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you. They really, really are. And I think, um, you know, they're grateful readers, whether for, for any type of illness not just alzheimer's because i think you know you go through the same sort of processes and emotions with any chronic disease that is terminal um and i think people who have loved ones with cancer etc can can get a lot out of your books because of that connection you know, because of the emotions you go through, the changes in life you go through. I, I think you're absolutely incredible. I really, really am. Um, I, I did, uh, in the, in the Monster Dog uh, for children, I do have a page for the parents uh, to, to, to tell them what I saw with children. Oh, and, fantastic. And then I do uh, have uh, the dog go through, uh, trying to figure out what's wrong when they go for a walk and how she has to lead him home and so on. And um, then when he, he dies, of course, and then the, the grief that she has to deal with. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I hope that will be helpful to parents and children because, you know, even my own grand, youngest grandchild was, uh, it was difficult for him to see grandpa like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's wonderful that you've added that as well. I really, really do. And you're right. I, I think people, a lot of people forget that animals do actually grieve, especially if they have such a close bond with their owner. Yes. Um, you know, I, I've seen, you know, I've seen it myself, you know, when, when, when my grandparents passed away and stuff. Animals have such a close bond and a protective bond, especially because they can sense that the person is unwell. She liked to put... I allowed her to get up on the bed and sleep with him at night. And so she slept with her head on his knee. And to this day, she will stand on his side of the bed and bark. It's almost like she's saying, where are you? Where are you? Oh. She really is a one-man dog. She puts up with me, but she loves him. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I could say the same about Poppy, actually, because she's the same with my husband. The, the moment he walks in through the door, she doesn't bark. She literally talks to him, and, she, and she'll go arr, 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 yeah. and all about her day. You know, um, I mean, we've got two of them, so they'll fuss all over Ian. And then I said, Poppy will tell him about her day. And then the moment Ellie says, "Yeah, I've said hello," and she goes off and does her own thing, Poppy will follow Ian to have like a sneaky cuddle on her own. Like, is my dad? <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing, honestly. Um, but but you're right. They are they are so close to the owners, um, and it's funny because we used to have um, a golden retriever called Emma, and she was the perfect dog, Carmen. She was beautiful, smart, intelligent, didn't miss a trick. And when she was a puppy, I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, and I slipped on a wet floor, went flying on my back and damaged all the ligaments in my leg. Well, I couldn't get up. I literally, I was laid on the floor in agony, couldn't move because of my leg. And she was a, a literally a puppy. She was only a few months old. Well, as I'm laid there thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because I couldn't move. She literally, as she was only tiny, she came and laid right next to me because she knew I was hurt. And she was just going... <laughs> I felt more. I felt worse for her than myself because we could see she was distressed. <laughs> now, look. I want to have another look at your book covers because they're absolutely beautiful. Because you've got 
Tassie's Diary of Secrets. Oh, oh yeah. They're so beautiful. They're honestly the gorgeous books. Are you right? What is her diary? There we go. Look at she. Adults like this one very much. She um, is so cute. Uh, she uh, spends her time and energy trying to fool me. Huh? And so there's a line in here, I never catch on to anything. And so it's ha, ha, ha. She says, I fooled her again. <laughs> and so she writes to her diary in this one. That's it's absolutely funny. She does. And um, uh, she, uh, all of the books and uh, not the Alzheimer's book, but all the other books and as a bedtime story. Oh, that's and, so wonderful. And this one has, I think, a lovely ending. It says, uh, uh, it's almost bedtime, dear diary. Pretty soon Carmen will tuck me into my little pink bed and say, good night, sleep well, my little sweet love. And I will sigh, wag my tail and think, good night, my special person. Sleep well, my sweet love. So oh, there are bedtime stories. I absolutely love that. That is so super cute. There's it really, really is. And the next one is Life's Lessons Learned. Ah, yes. Life isn't always easy for Tassie the Shih Tzu. Sometimes oh, no. she has problems she doesn't know how to solve. Oh. We write about her misadventures and the lessons she learned along the way, like forgiveness. And uh, I think this is the one that has a story in it about a bully. And uh, learning to be welcoming because she went to obedience school and she was scared and somebody welcomed her. And, Katie, as I said, is so wonderful with the pictures. She's yeah. done an amazing job of bringing your words to life. Well, don't follow strangers. Remember I said I have things that mothers and fathers yeah. and teachers can use. So there's always a couple stories like that. That is phenomenal. She says, I was so glad to be home. I thought to myself, from now on, I will listen to my inner voice and not follow strangers. Oh, can you see the picture? It's so cute. Her little face. She she looks like she's got. Oh, it looks just like face. she looks just like this. It's just amazing. And Did then I tell you about the new cover. Oh yes, the new yes. cover. It's going. It's the new book. It's what shall I be when I grow up? And she's going to be a singer at one point. Oh, that's so, right. so she has. If I told you, yes. Okay. That's right with the microphone. I can't wait. Yeah. To see that. Tiara. <laughs> <laughs> well, every princess needs a tiara. Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Um, Kirsten has mm -hmm. very kindly put all your links in the comments, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Kirsten. She is wonderful, wonderful. Um, but as I said, if anyone's got any more questions, please pop them in the comments. That would be wonderful. Um, I feel a real connection to you, Carmen, because, um, I mean, you, your books are just absolutely amazing. And my admiration for you in starting a new career in later life is just phenomenal. Um, but That's also, of you. It, 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 I'm, I'm totally sincere. It's incredible. I also feel quite connected to you because I, my grandmother um, suffered from um, a mental illness when I was young. And I think it's, even now as an adult, I think it was the hardest things I've ever had to try and cope with and, and see. Um, I, I can't even imagine how, how hard it was for you because we used to go and see my, my grandmother. My, my grandmother basically had a complete mental breakdown when she found my granddad had passed away in his chair. She, she, she just couldn't cope with it. And she never really recovered. Um, and when she was really poorly, she couldn't, she didn't know us, didn't know our names. We were complete strangers to her. Mm -hmm. And I think as a child, that was the hardest thing because I couldn't understand why she couldn't remember us and didn't know our names. And treated us like strangers. Her whole body language and verbiage was why are you here why are you talking to me i don't know you sort of thing i think that was quite tough mm -hmm. and, and uh tassi uh, the theme of, of that second book on alzheimer's is uh, 
uh, he may have forgotten me in his mind, but he will always remember me in his heart. Yes. And so that's one of the main stories. So. Yeah, that's just amazing. Now, I, I know I touched on it when, I, when we were emailing, um, but I wanted to mention it, obviously, to, to our viewers as well. Um, and I don't know whether it's something you've heard about um, before I mentioned it, but I watched this really fascinating medical documentary because I'm weird like that. I watch all sorts of things like that. I find it fascinating. Um, and it was also about, you know, the, the FDA and, and how things, medicines and devices are approved. There's two things that I learned. The first is that any medical device doesn't have to go through the same procedures as medicines. There's a loophole, basically. So medical devices or new medical devices can get approved if it's similar to something that was brought out even as far back as like the 1960s, which I thought was mind blowing. But also some of the devices that are made of metal, the metal actually disintegrate in the body, putting metal into the bloodstream, which then affects the brain, which actually mimics or acts like Alzheimer's. Hmm. That blew me away, and there was this one doctor, and he was actually a surgeon, a surgeon, who was actually using these medical devices, and he himself had to have a knee replacement. And the metal in the knee replacement unit actually did that to him. It, it disintegrated in his knee, poisoned his body, and started causing out like Alzheimer's, memory loss, couldn't couldn't concentrate. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only through having the, the device moved and seeing the damage and that it all disintegrated, and then him given time to let the metal flush out of his system, that he recovered. I, I, I was really shocked by that, Carmen, because I thought to myself, how many people have been misdiagnosed as having Alzheimer's when in fact it could be metal poisoning from a medical device that's been put inside them? It's very interesting. I, I was shocked. I was shocked by that. And I thought to myself, I, you know, it's something that I better bring up because I never knew that. Yeah, and of recent years, um, and at, at one point, in fact, Ken was in a study at Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic on sleep deprivation or apnea, you know, yeah. when you, like that in the night and you don't get into the REM or deep sleep. And there's a, they've discovered a very real link between uh, sleep patterns and not getting deep sleep, REM sleep, and Alzheimer's. It's been rather recent, but Ken was in one of the original studies of that. We're only 50 miles from Mayo Clinic, so we were in several studies over there. That's amazing, isn't it? I think it's super important to, to find all these things out because it can yes. really give early indication of, of, of absolutely and can interfere with like if you have the sleep machine it could interfere with the process of having dementia mm -hmm. wow do you know i didn't even think of that but you, you're right it's yeah. amazing isn't it yeah, and ken did that he go and then he wouldn't breathe for a little bit and then of course he didn't get into a deep sleep and so, anyway, he had sleep apnea, and that may have participated in the early onset. That's just amazing. And, and it'd be interesting to see if that actually speeds up the process as well. Of, of having it? Yeah. yeah because I know it's a very individual disease, isn't it? Some people, they, they just, you know, decline really, really quickly, whereas others, it's well, there are different kinds of Alzheimer's as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's interesting because before I, I set up our interview, um, I did not know that. And, and, and that's the same with a lot of diseases. There are uh, spectrums of, of how severe it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that until I started. You see, he never, he never, he had the temporal here uh, involvement. And so, uh, his personality didn't really change. He just drifted away from us. Uh, but 
there's another type of Alzheimer's called Lewy body, it's two words. And um, that is on this part of the brain right here, the prefrontal lobe. And as I understand it, this is where emotions are, are centered. And so they have very often a change in personality. They also don't live as long as Kim did with it. Wow. I, I to, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? And, I, and I'm not actually surprised by that because nurture and, and feeling happy actually enables you to live longer. Mm -hmm. that That's, true. That's true. So that makes sense to me. That makes sense that your emotions are being affected and you're, you know, you're not able to have a steady stream of happy and content emotion. That would make sense that you would find sooner. That's just oh, I differently. You must be, I mean, after looking after your husband for 18 years and learning all this about Alzheimer's, you must be, you're the most knowledgeable person I know, Carmen. Well, uh, I'm sure there are many people that have lived with this that know a lot too. It's just that I wrote it down. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think it's good to research. I really, really do. I think it's good because then I think the more knowledge you have about something, the more control you feel you have. And I now get to go around and, of course, with the COVID, that was put to rest. But I, I did just a couple of weeks ago give another little talk about Alzheimer's around town. And I, I treasure those opportunities to help people see what's normal and not normal and to try to encourage people. Um, anyway, that's been one of the pluses as far as I'm concerned, is to be a kind of a spokesman for people. I think that's wonderful, Carmen. And I'm sure everybody who who has the chance to hear what you has to have to say, they must get so much out of it because they then know this lady understands I'm not alone. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, okay. James says that's heartbreaking with regards to your husband and, and obviously what's happened. We had um, good years during those 18 years. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Carmen says, uh, sorry, Kirsten says, Carmen is my guru for advice. She's very knowledgeable about anything having to do with the benefits of sleep. And she gets on about the, the hours I keep. Do you know, I, uh, I, got to, I hold my hands up, Carmen. I am the worst because... I end up staying up to two, one, one and two in the morning writing because I'm one of those, I have to get everything done first before I can sit down and focus on my writing. And then the next day I feel, oh. <laughs> Okay, it's important to follow your circadian rhythm. <laughs> I'm terrible, I'm terrible. And, and I would love to be a night owl, but I go to bed at 10 because that's my circadian rhythm. Yeah. So my I problem. I, I, I literally get to the afternoon and I think I could just have a snooze right now, but I can't because I've got this to do, I've got that to do. And then I think I just get overtired, get past it. Well, if you don't tell anybody, I'll admit to taking a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> but don't tell. <laughs> do you know what? I think, I think the US is missing out because in Europe, having a siesta yes, yes. in the afternoon is an everyday thing. Right. They close shop. They close shop. They have their to do dishes at nine at night. Yeah, and that's the other part of it, though. They eat the evening meals so late. They do, but you know what? Their their overall health is way better than ours. <laughs> there must be something to it, Carmen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to be a night owl, but oh my gosh, I I must admit I do enjoy writing in the evening. I really, really do because everything's quiet. The doctors are asleep. Everyone else is in bed. I know everything's done. I, I can just focus on what I want to do. I might have to start having like daytime naps or something. Something needs to give. <laughs> it depends what your circadian rhythm is too. I mean, maybe that, maybe that's okay. Well, I, I'm gonna. Ha I might have to have a private conversation with that, with you about that, but and find out more. I think I've said all I know about it. You have to talk to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so you've got a new new book coming out, which is for adults, which is the Our Life of Alzheimer's Disease. I'm super excited about that. When is it, when is it due to come out? Is that soon? Well, it's going to go to the editor uh, next week. And uh, Chelsea Farr, who's uh, Kristen's daughter and part of the company, uh, partner of the company, is going to edit it. And uh, so I suppose it'll be three or four months, but wow. uh, and they will not be full of pictures other than a picture of Ken and me together. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's really about the legal problems that one has to have. And uh, it's about uh, the decisions that the advocate has to make, which are so difficult. And then it's about um, death and dying and uh, being there for them and being an advocate. Yes. I cannot say enough about being an advocate. There are pages and pages. But it's funny, too. Uh, there are funny things that happen at the nursing home, and so they're there. And um, it's funny, even with Alzheimer's, Ken had a buddy who happened to be our insurance man. And they um, got together, the aides told me, because they were both in the same area. And every time they got together, they had the same conversation about being soldiers in Korea. Word for word, I guess. I never heard it, but it's it's quite... Um, you know, they still remember like the 50s. Like people at the nursing home could sing the lyrics to songs of the 50s, for example. Wow. You know, because the long term memory sometimes is still functioning. Yeah. And so, anyway, they would have, they told me that. And so I wrote about that in the new book too. But uh, being an advocate is so important. And you just have to uh, speak up and be there for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. Especially when they're not able to, you know, to, to say for themselves what they want. And who better to, to be that advocate than than their spouse or, or loved one, because they know them the best. But, but I'm sure there's been times where it was a little bit intimidating for you, but you had to step up to the plate and go, uh, no, this is what he would want we want to go down this route. And I, I would imagine you've had to be very, very strong in those situations, Carmen. Yes, I always tried to be gracious as I could be, but there were times when uh, I had to uh, be, what's the word I want to use? Assertive. Assertive, thank you, that's a good word. Yeah. yeah there were times. Yeah. Well, I think you're just absolutely incredible. I really, really do, Carmen. You are an amazing lady. You really are. So what are your plans for the future then? Oh, oh, I mean, are you having a break while your book is being, you know, getting ready for publication or have you already started writing something else? Well, of course, I'm doing the What Shall I Be When I Grow Up series now. What Katie's doing the pictures, and they're to be done by June or in June. And so... I have toyed with the idea of having Tassie do a book of her prayers. Oh. So I would, the one story I wrote, which is very few words then, is on friendship. And I've using this, I used the scripture from Psalms. So I've been thinking about that. And I think if I write anything else ever, that'll probably be what I'll do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe you could do one about um, being isolated Obviously, there's a lot of children that are, you know, have been isolated for months because of the pandemic and not being able to see their friends and, and things like that. So maybe Tassie could have uh, an issue where she's having to be isolated from her friends and she, you know, she's finding ways to cope with it, maybe. 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 Oh, I'm so excited for you. I really, really am. Um, just wanted to let everybody know. Um, as, most, as all our viewers know, we try and do giveaways. And the winner for last week, um, the Christine Raymond's interview was Rosina Eisenman. So, so congratulations, Christina. Congratulations to you. And uh, I will be messaging you later and, uh, and getting that organized for you. Um, next interview is... I've got to pronounce this, try and get it, get it right, Carmen, because it's not, she's got a very unusual name. 
So the next interview was on Monday with Shatai Carillion. That's so beautiful, isn't it? Shatai. Shatai? I actually, I think Shatai sounds really nice too. Shatai Carillion on Monday. Um, this interview will be posted everywhere, including my new podcast, which is available on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, and lots of others. So if you aren't able to watch the interview um, and listen to Carmen, then you can actually listen to it um, in your car or wherever via my podcast. So I will be posting and sharing that later on as well. Um, Carmen, I think you're just wonderful i really really do and You're very gracious thank you thank you so much for coming today and just being so truly honest and an open book literally about your experience with alzheimer's and and your journey with your husband and it's just a, it's such a personal journey that you're willing to share and you're absolutely incredible well thank you you really are yeah, um thank you well, I th it's well deserved. It really, really is. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I truly appreciate it. And if you aren't watching us live and you have a question to Carmen, please put it in the comments and Carmen and I will check um, and reply to any questions. But thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And uh, hopefully you will catch us next Monday on the Witty Mighty Show. We will see you then. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.